Hi, welcome back uh, to Python application programming. So we were discussing about uh, file handling, right? So as we get experience, I told, we will not leave somebody to take the handle, right? So we will take the handle over that and we will try to discuss like what best can be done as a programmer. Okay. So if a file is missing, so we understood that it will throw an error, all that. But as we proceed, like becoming good with programming, then we do not want to handle somebody like uh, somebody will tell something and take some action on that. No, what we want, if something goes wrong as a programmer, I want to handle that. For example, if file is missing, we know that it will throw an error, but we should take an action based on that. If it is an error, then I take an action on that and proceed further. We do have a concept in Python where we, we, we are trying to read a file given from a user. So, we are, we are telling the user, okay, look, you give the file name, I will handle that. So, for which we understood that the file name, is, sorry, the function name is raw input. So, raw input, what it does? It will ask for the user to enter the file, we give this. So, user will enter a file that we store in a variable called f name. Then, I try to open that file. In which mode? In a read mode. If the file exists, no problem, we can continue doing the processing part. What if file does not exist? We understood, it will throw an error, right? So, if it is throwing an error, then we are giving the complete handle to what? The Python programming where it will handle that based on that, it will terminate our program. But what should we do? For the end user, as a programmer, I have to make sure that, okay, I, you are getting this error because of this. So, I, I try to inform him like, politely saying that, look, there is an error, I may terminate my program for which we have a choice, right? That choice is what? Try, accept. So, we can use a concept of try. So, we will, we'll, what we are trying to do? In normally many programming languages, we call that as what? Try catch. We, we general concept is what? Try catch. So, here we have some set of statement which can throw an error. Then based on that during runtime, I want to catch that error and take appropriate action. See, normally when the, whenever there is an error, one, I can go back and tell my user to do the re-entry of it or maybe I will give him like why, uh, why you are getting this error and I might terminate my program. Right? So, based on the preference that is required for an end user or maybe the experience with the programmer, then we can take an appropriate action where few instances we are supposed to terminate the program, there is no other choices. But few instances we can give actually an option to the programmer to re-enter the file name telling that file does not exist or there is some mistake you are given the file name and some appropriate information. So, here which function or maybe which code of python is there are choices of raising an error. So, when I try to open a file there is a chance that it can raise an error provided the file name does not exist. So, I take that line, I take that line. I try to embed that line after try, after try. So, normally any programming line if you talk about try catch, then in between them you write a line which will raise, which where are the chances that that particular line can raise a runtime error. So, we know that open can raise an error during runtime provided the file name does not exist. So, I will put a code there. So, after try, after try. Now, what if that error has occurred? then I should handle, I should handle. So, now what I am doing is, if the file does not exist, then I want to tell the user, file cannot be opened, file cannot be opened and then what is that f name? Simple, f name is the name of the file name that the user has entered. So, I want to print, for example, he says sample.txt is my file, he has entered sample.txt. Then, if file does not exist, so it throws an error, we have caught it then this function will be executed that printf, it will print file cannot be opened, which file sample.txt. So, it will tell file cannot be opened sample.txt, then exit, what is exit? Terminate the program. So, now instead of somebody telling that there is an error in the file, the programmer will give the appropriate message for the end user and he will be able to identify that, okay, why this error occurred, then what is the correction that he has supposed to do can be managed. In case, if this is success then these two statements will never execute, it will start executing the code appropriately. So, if an error occurs, then I am handling that error runtime and based on what type of error I try to 
in, uh, I try to display that to the user like some appropriate message and take an appropriate action here. So, action can be what? Maybe I can go back and ask him to enter a refile, the file name to be entered again or I can tell I will terminate my program. So, where I am doing like exit. And so, if you look at a sample is given where what are we doing? This logic is what? In the file, we are trying to count how many lines, how many lines start with, how many lines start with a word called subject, how many lines start with a word called subject. So, if satisfied, we are incrementing count. So, in that case, this logic is what? This whole program is what? Given a file name, it will count how many lines are starting with subject and display the count. So, assuming that we pass mbox.txt, so it says there were so many lines with subject, right? 1797 lines with subject as the start, start with. Maybe we are given something file name which does not exist, then it should tell me what file cannot be opened. Look at that, file cannot be opened and the name of the file. Now, what if this code we did not embed, so we have not handled this, then what will happen? Yeah, once you give this, it will throw an error. So, you will have lot of information like 0, 0, 0 some numbers and which may not be a appropriate information for an end user. For a programmer it is ok, but for an end user it is not very much appropriate. So, we as a programmer handle the error. So, when you look at writing python programming, so we should be very careful, we, any error that is expected then at run time we should be able to handle that right for which we have a option here. Now, so, whatever those examples that we have discussed like opening a file, doing an operation in the file, either it could be a count or it could be looking at display part and so on, all were of the form this, right, where we told only open and the file name, but we never discussed about mode because all were by default read mode. What if it was a write mode, right, so in that case if I am telling write mode then we are trying to write data into a file. So, what is that option that we are, we are supposed to look into it? Now, when we discussed about uh, reading data into a file, so how did we read? Either we read the complete data of the file using read or maybe a line by line using foreign statement, whatever we have read, we were displaying. What did we use? Print. But where did we display that? On the screen. What is that we are discussing now? We are trying to do something to a, something similar to print, but not onto the screen, onto a file. So, we want to write data onto a file for which what is the mode that we should open the file in a read mode sorry in a write mode right wherein we are trying to write data into a file. This is a sample code where which looks uh, which is something like demonstrating writing data into a file. We will look at the concept of this and try to figure out something wrong in this and we should manage it. Right. So, again going back to something like print, we will also discuss something with respect to write. Now, how to open a file in a write, a write mode where I am trying to my intention of what writing data into a file, what is the function name open followed by what the file name and the mode, mode in which I want to open the file, what is the intention of opening that file. So, I want to write data into the file. Now, once it is success, what is the meaning of success? Yeah, mbox.txt is there, old, old content is erased and I have a file handler. If file does not exist, it will create a file. Then where is that error part and maybe I am not able to, where am I creating this onto the hard disk, right? So, if there is some problem with the hard disk also, this open function may not be successful. So, run time we can use try here, okay. So, going back here, we, the function name is open and if it is success, then we have a a variable called uh, f handle in our example which will be pointing to a file right. So, now I want to read or write or anything I will use a file handler, but what is my choice here writing data. So, now there is a string called welcome which I store in a variable line 1. So, line 1 is a variable that is all what is the content of it? it is a welcome. Now, what is my next step I want to write this welcome onto my file inside the file. So, what will I do? use the file handler which is my file handler f handle. So, I will use f handle dot write f handle dot write line 1 what is my line 1 welcome. So, my file 
is new file that is opened my file handler is handle that is f handle and write so it will write data in line 1 what is line 1 line 1 is a variable it is not actually the actual representation like line 1 it is only a variable name so line 1 welcome so it will write welcome welcome so now where is my file handler now my file handler is updated and it is after welcome right so now I have another string to python which I store in a variable called line 2 ok do not get confused it is not blank it is together it is line 2. Now what will I do use the file handler that is f handle dot write line 2 what is my line 2 to python so it will write to python so this is our output welcome to python. So now after everything is done this is our processing part I have opened the file I have completed everything what is my last step close the file. So, how do I close file handler dot close what is my file handler f handle dot close done then what is that we want to discuss here now look our understanding is like this right when I tell file handle that is f handle dot write the data it has written welcome done very good next I have some data I will tell write then it has to go to second line no but it is writing on the same line why because there is some difference for print what happens recall that we discussed no in read for print automatically slash n is included there but for write slash n is not there. So now what if I want welcome on one line to python on the second line so what should I do when you write data you should also mention slash n here if you do not mention slash n then it will got it will not go to next line. So, what we have to do line 1 slash n line 2 this slash n. So, we will pass this it will it will write slash n here it will write slash n here. So, in that case it goes to a new line. So, this slash n in write we have to tell that but slash n in print we need not tell because automatically slash n is taken care by the print function. But when you want to write a line you have to decide that which is the end of the line use slash n accordingly. So, this is an example like modifying into a w flag what are the necessary changes. Now, you want to append fine it is appending no you are write line 1 line 2 so what is that first line second line third line fourth line and it keeps on appending like this. But what is the difference you close this program you rerun the program again this whole content gone because you are hoping that in a right mode what if you are you are you we will assume like this nothing is there first time we run this program when you run this program it will open if file does not exist also it will create a new file add the content to the file and stop we will close that is handle f handle dot close done we will modify this program instead of w I will make it as a a stands for what? append. So, now once I make it a what has to be done? Once I make it a the whole file content will stay as it is my file pointer will not be pointing to the top of the file it will be pointing to the end of the file. So, whatever I write will be appended here it keeps on appending. So, this is what append operation is right. So, based on the type of the mode the necessary action is taken care right. So, this is about the file handling. So, what is a file? Why a, a concept like file handling came into existence? Then what are the functions that are or maybe the steps that we need to take in file handling? Then the corresponding python functions which are available and finally, like there are few uh, misunderstanding that we have which we need to be very clear like what in print slash will be automatically updated that we have to manage. How did we manage? we use something called as a r strip in write slash n will not be updated automatically we have to manage how did we do that we included explicitly saying slash n inside this. So, based on this uh, we will be able to get number of lines anything that to be updated and so on right. So, all kind of processing can be done on the file and one step number one this will be common the last step will be common for all kind of operations and this whole thing will become our logic where it could be read write or append or anything any functionality on the logic part we write the code here.
So, this is complete about the file handling. Right? So, uh, with this we come to the end of module 2, but what we do? We will try to figure out few things which are very very important in understanding. Like if you recall previous sessions I had given few homework kind of thing or maybe some thinking kind of questions where I told we will be discussing in the subsequent sessions. So, we will talk about that now. Now, when you look at this code, this is our python code, figure out what is wrong in this code. Right. So, when you look at that a equal to 33, b equal to 200, if b greater than a, print b is greater, everything is appropriate. No? Right, everything is appropriate, but when you run this program, what do we get? We are getting an error. Look at the name, the categorization of that error, indentation error, indentation error, which says expected and indented block. So, what is the mistake here? In this program, we have written one print statement, and with our assumption that print statement is coming under if statement, with that assumption, we have written the code. But according to Python, this print is not under if statement. Why? Because we know right format of if statement, we have to give a indent here. Right? So, because of that, it is telling me the error is what? Indentation error. So, what is the solution for this? Simple, give an indent for a print statement. Look at that, give an indent for the print statement. So, a equal to 33, b equal to 200 condition and we have an indent print. So, now, our understanding is appropriate with the understanding what python does also because we are telling print is under the if statement right so you should be very careful about the indentation this is also applicable for uh, any set of statements in the looping structure any set of statement in the control structure now so if you write something like if condition set of statements set of statements now when the statements are executed, when this condition becomes true, when these statements are not executed, when these are not executed, when this condition becomes false. What about this statement? All these statements does not come under if statement, all this statement does not come under if statement because they are not indented. So, these statements will be executed whether my if condition is true or false it does not matter because they are outside the if statement. So, how do I make sure that this happens? It is the indentation. There are many programming languages where instead of indentation they follow something called as curly braces start and end of the block start and end of the block, but in python we do not use that we use a indentation technique. So, as we have an indent here, so our code is very much appropriate right. So, when you run this code you do not get any error there. Now, so another we have something called as a while loop where we are trying to look at what i equal to 0, then compare condition i less than 6, increment the value of i and checking i equal to 3 continue. So, this example is what trying to look at what continue does right. So, first time i equal to 0, are we printing 0? No. When you look at the output, the first value is 1. How it is 1? Yeah, we know right. So, here we are increment the value by 1. Now, this statement i plus equal to 1 is nothing but we know i equal to i plus 1. This is short form of that. So, i equal to 0, 0 plus 1, 1, 1 equal to 3, no, it will come here print 1. So, it is printing 1. So, as this loop proceeds, once you get i equal to 3, i equal to 3, what will happen? i equal to 3 equal to 3, yes, it is true, then continuous statement is executed. Now, what is the job of continuous statement or what is the function of continuous statement or continuous keyword? Continue is what? Skip rest of the lines, go back to next iteration. So, skip all that, go back to next iteration means what? Go to i value, that is condition part. So, automatically i was 3, continue, it will go back here, i increments to 4, i increments to 4. So, 4 equal to 3, no, it will come down here, print. So, 4. So, what is missing in this is when the value of i is 3, we are not printing it. So, note that the number 3 is missing in the result. So, what continue does? Stop the iteration, go to the next iteration. So, it will go back to the while loop where I, I, I while loop 
3 less than 6, it will go here 3 plus 1 4, 4 equal to 3 no, so it will print the value as 4. So, continue will inform us what? Stop the iteration, skip, skip all the rest of the statement, go back here. Now, how do I make sure that all the statements are under while loop? Yeah, as we have the indentation here, so we know that all these statements are under the while loop. So, this is very important to understand that any set of statements inside a looping structure all should follow an indentation technique. If this is an if statement, if statement and how do I make sure that all the statements under if I will put an indentation and write all my statements here. Anything that write here will tell me that they are outside the if statement. So, you should be very careful using the indentation technique. So, another code which talks about what? Uh, how to use a foreign statement. Now, here we have uh, two where we have set of values, set of two different values, then what we can do on this? We can run an iteration trying to access red, big, tasty on one side, apple, banana, cherry on the other side. So, now when you look at this code for x for in loop we have first list the variable name. So, what happens here? First time x is red, second time x is big, third time x is tasty. Similarly, we have for in statement with y with the second group. What is second group name? Fruits. So, first time x is red, second time x is big, third time x is tasty. Similarly, for y first time it is apple, next time it is banana, next time it is cherry. Now, when you look at this print statement, first time x is red, for x equal to red, we will run the inner loop. What is our inner loop? y in, in fruits. So, y in fruits is what? Apple. So, first time y value is apple. So, we are printing x comma y. Yeah, what is x? Red, y is pointing to apple, A red apple. Next, we will always increment the inner loop. Once it is done, we will go back to the outer loop. That is the concept. So, inner loop will go to next one. Next one is what? Banana. So, y pointing to banana. x is red red banana. Similarly, y will be pointing to cherry, still x is red. So, red cherry. Then it will go to next, next value we do not have. So, inner loop completed. It will go to the outer loop. Now, outer loop x will be pointing to big. So, once x is pointing to big, it will get into inner loop, a new iteration. So, y will be pointing to apple. So, it will print big apple. Similarly, big banana, big cherry. After all the iterations of inner loop is done, it will go back to the outer loop. Now, outer loop will be pointing to tasty, outer loop is pointing to tasty. Now, inner loop first iteration, first iteration will be apple. So, tasty apple, tasty banana, tasty cherry, same thing we have. So, this example talks about what? The inner loop and the advantage of using a foreign statement. So, inner loop, every iteration it will take the value, once it is done, it will go to the outer loop, increment that, again inner loop will be a first iteration. So, we you should remember that first time y is apple, next banana, next cherry, we do not have anything. So, x gets incremented, x will go to big. What happens to y? y we have already traced to cherry. So, as x incremented to big, as x is pointing to big, my y will be my first value in that group. So, y will be pointing to apple, next iteration banana, next iteration cherry. So, that is what inner loop and the outer loop is. So, this example talks about how to use for in statement and also talk about the implementation of an inner loop. Now, here uh, when we discussed about string, we told uh, either the string can be enclosed in a single quotes or a double quotes, right? Look at that hello and hello. So, if you look at hello is in single quotes, here hello is in double quotes, there is no distinction, they are same. Now, if you look at this, the print statement is x where x is what a variable from the group banana. So, where banana is a string. So, in that case what will be the value of x first time? b, next time a, next time n, then a, then n, then a. So, we are printing it. So, we see that we have a print. Now, here after the discussion of file handling, you should have a clear picture like why we are getting the output not on a single row, we have multiple rows. So, after b, we do not have a slash n, but why we are going a on to a next line, 
remember we discussed right print will automatically add slash n automatically add slash n so after printing b it will add slash n so it will go to next line it will print a after that slash n it will go to n print n and so on so that is the reason why we get that in multiple columns instead of having in single column as banana now one special thing which we did which we did not discuss is something like slicing right one what is the meaning of b and index ah right if you look at that recall what did we discuss about when when we started discussing about string slicing we have, we took this example so now i want to slice my string i want to slice my string starting with end with now what is starting with i have not specified nothing end with i am not specified so in the case what is that slicing if my slicing is a uh, welcome to python programming what will be my output if b is welcome to python program what will be output welcome to python program because i am not telling the start with i am not telling what is the position so start i am not telling what is the ending position it will go till the end of the string so i get the complete string then we also discuss like two two colon then i want in the whole string what i stored in b i will start with index to go till the end of the string go till the end of the string or we told two four i will start with two go till four but do not consider four that's what slicing is but apart from this we do have something called as negative indexing we have a negative indexing so we have some concept called negative indexing so now using negative indexing the complete concept is from the end of the string the complete concept is from the end of the string so whatever the indexing that we give will be from the end of the string if it is positive it's always through start of the string right what is the meaning of two from start two characters again similarly from start till fourth character so yeah all positive will tell me start from the start negative will meet start from the last start from the end of the string right so using negative indexing to sl start slicing from the end of the string from the end of the string so look at this example b equal to hello comma world hello comma world then i shall print b okay good minus 5 colon minus 2 so what is this minus 5 so it's nothing but 5 indexing is 5 but as we are using minus it will start from end of the string so if you look at 1 2 3 4 5 so in that case i am pointing to o i am pointing to o next minus 2 end again minus 2 so 1 2 stop at d so start from o stop till d but do not consider d that remains same as it is so o r l so look at the output the output is orl so now you should be clear like in string slicing we can use one no values at all start with end with complete second i can use only start with i do not specify anything here it will go till end of the string i specify here but i do not tell anything about it it will start from or i may have a negative value i may have a negative value so when you tell a negative value you will always take that indexing from the reverse you will always take the indexing from the end of the string right so can we have a mix and match but never you cannot have a mix and match so when you tell end of the string you should use from the end of the string only so negative value yeah many times we also use that because instead of uh, going like from the end going to a character we do not know like counting everything but we knew that we want url but we will not start from the start we start from the end of the string easy for us to identify so to achieve this we will use a negative indexing right another concept important concept which we need to keep in mind then what is the difference between these two we had discussed right so some important things a equal to hello b equal to world c equal to a plus b so print c what is plus here as a is a string b is a string plus stands for concatenation so now i combine these two together and store it in c print c so what do we get hello world so hello world is not two words it is one word because we are con combining them together what if i want hello space world so while you concatenate you need to take care of it how a is still hello b is still world 
but we concat one blank space here. So once you concat with the blank space, we get hello world. So you should be very careful. Concatenation will not if it is hello is separate word, world is separate word. When you combine them, it's not two words; it is single word. So to have blank space, we should explicitly specify well concatenation. Then, if you remember, when I discuss starts with during string string manipulation, I told one question mark. Once we got true, next time we are getting false. Why are we getting that? Right. So I told you think about it. We'll discuss. So coming back here, similar kind of example where we have a variable called txt where the value is hello comma welcome to my world right so where the text is what hello comma welcome to the world now what am i doing i am trying to check text dot starts with whether it is starts with a word called hello yeah good we have hello here so in the case this is when i tell print x what is x recall i am calling start with and the value is stored in what what is that value x will contain index of nothing right x is a boolean value so hello is there i am looking at starts with hello yes it is starting with so x is nothing but true here true second instance we have hello welcome to my world but what am i checking starts with h so look at that it is starting with h so print x the result is what true third hello world same text but what i am i checking h yeah h is there here but it is case sensitive so this h is a lower case this h is a upper case it doesn't match so the output is false so start with we'll check with what it is case sensitive so this is h and this happens to be a small h so you should be very careful start with doesn't mean that uh, it can be here hello we have h is also there but it is case sensitive lower case are different from the upper case right so start with here first time it will return true second time also true because it is matching third time it will return false because what i am checking is lower case h but what exists is a upper case h so they are different hence it will return false okay this is one special thing where we come across some problems right as we have a plus sign so which is used for concatenation we feel that this will work we we'll look into it a is equal to 36 36 is not a string it's a numerical value text equal to my name is john i am dash i am plus age so indicating what what we expect is i am what 36 right so we should get age value as 36 so we we expect this to be 36 so we'll print txt so when you run this as per our expectation we should get an output but it will throw an error why the error is because of this age that variable age what is the content it's an integer but what am i doing this is a string plus i expect this to be a string because it's a concatenation character so look at that error error is what type error what it says must be a string so it is telling that this should be a string but actually speaking it's an integer so we want that integer to be printed as it is so in these cases we have a facility we have a facility where we can print the integer value not as a string so we should not use plus character we should not use a plus character we use something called as a formatting character which will help us to achieve the integer to be printed in two different ways so you got it right why did we get this error because my second uh, value that i have is an integer which should have been a string because we are concatenating two strings which will not work because this is an integer value so how to overcome this problem one we use something called as a percentage operator percentage operator which is called as what formatting character now what this percentage d stands for d for decimal right so if it is something like an integer value a whole number that i want to display i'll use percentage d we we have lot of options like percentage d percentage f for real numbers percentage s for string and so on right 
So, here as it is an integer value, I will say percentage. What is that variable name? Variable name is age. So, I will use percentage age. So, now when you run this program, what it will print? My name is John, I am. Instead of percentage d, which stands for integer value, it will look for what you have after percentage age. Print the value of age here. That age value should be an integer value. Yeah, 36. So, when you look at the output, is my name is John, I am 36. Right. So, be careful when you want to display an integer, use formatting character which is percentage t, right? For integer, if age happens to be a, a real number, use percentage f and so on, right? Now, when you use this formatting character, you should be one, one caution to be taken. If there is only one variable, need not worry about that, write that variable. If it is more than one variable, yeah, you have to group them. That is very, very important, right? So, what is that percentage operator called as? It is a modulus operator, modulus operator, which is identified as what? String formatting operator. So, if you have a value other than string, which you want to embed that into a file, you have two options. One, string formatting character like this. Second, string formatting function. So, you have string formatting operator, string formatting function. First of all, what we are looking is a string formatting operator, which is a modulus operator. Now, look at this example, x equal to walk, y equal to looked, x equal to some variable, some value like walk, y is a variable with a value looked. Now, we are printing, what is that? Mishra percentages around with x, right? So, we are using formatting character, x, what is the value of x? Walked. So, what is the output? Mishra walked around, yeah, we got it, Mishra walked around. Second, what I want to print is more than one, what I want to print is more than one. So, in that case, I will write Mishra percentages and percentages around percentage, what I want for first one, x, what I want for the second one is y. So, when you have multiple values to be printed, a caution to be taken, that caution is what? I, I should make them as group. I should enclose them all the variables that I have like this. So, now what will happen? The first value is for the first formatting character, second value what I have will be for the second formatting character. So, when you run this, x is for first one, y is for the second one. What is x walked? So, it will tell the output will be what? Mishra walked and looked around. Mishra walked and looked around. Yeah, perfect we got. So, when you have a non integer value or maybe you do not want to use a plus operator to concatenate in between you can use the string formatting operator which is a modulus operator one if you have one need not worry about that if you have more than one then you have to make sure that you enclose all those list of variables inside that braces now the second option that we have what is the first option String formatting operator. Second one, string format function. We have a function called format, which has a placeholder, which has a placeholder. Now, in that case, you have a function called format where you pass the values, right? The variables, quantity, item number, price. So, what is this one quantity? What is the item number? What is the price if you look at? Here, when you look at the occurrences, the index is 0 index is 1, index is 2, right? The placeholders are 0, 1 and 2. Now, look at the uh, variable my order, look at the variable my order. I want to pay placeholder 2, dollars for placeholder 0, items placeholder 1, right? So, now look at what is placeholder 2? It is price. What is the value of price? 49. So, this should be my 49.95. Then dollars to placeholder 0, what is that placeholder quantity which happens to be 3. Then item of placeholder 1, what is my index 1? One. 1 is item number, what is item number? 567, 567. All these are the placeholders from where? From the function format. So, when you look at what should be my output? I want to pay 49.95 dollars for 3 pieces of item 567. Yeah, we got the correct output. So, you have two options. What is option number 1? Either you can use an operator called 
percentage modulus operator or you can use a function called format a function called format with the placeholders. So, all these are the placeholders. So, you can interchange them your placeholders will also change and very important that when you call them it need not be the same occurrence it need not be the same because all these are the placeholders. But when you use percentage the ordering is a must. So, when you write first percentage that is x when you write second that is for white when you third that is for the third. So, if you interchange this also you should interchange. So, interchange is required if it is a operator, but if it is a function interchange is not required because I use the placeholder values indexes. So, I can write them in order I can write them in any order it will work right. So, this is another option for what if it is a non integer value integer value without using plus you want to have a particular statement this is the best option. So, what is available percentage what we discuss it is a old format, but the function format is available in the current version we can start using this ok. So, one peculiar problem will occur when you have some when you have want some specific characters to be part of your string right. So, now look at this we are so called dash 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 from the north, but what is important the word enclosed in double quotes, but what happens when you write a text we are and so on then I uh, what python does start of the string end of the string start of the string end of the string for a single variable which is the invalid right. So, now when you tell end of the string then subsequent character should not be considered, but what happened here we want this double quotes to be as it is enclosed which will not happen. So, we have one concept where if you have something of this kind where equals sorry not equal sorry the quotes double quotes has some different meaning what is that either it will be a start of the string or end of the string. Now, you want to change the meaning of this double quote yes you can there is a predefined meaning you want to change example which we have already come across what is it n indicates what character n. Now, you want to change the meaning of it we told slash. So, we told when I put slash it becomes slash n what did the meaning instead of character n it became new line character. Similarly, I want to change the meaning of this simple u slash maybe a guess right. So, cross check yes it is the answer for us right. So, now going back when I have a text like this when I try to print I get an error right. So, look at that error syntax error why it is invalid syntax once it is a end of the string I should not have any characters here, but here I, I do have a character. So, how do I overcome this problem like what I told change the meaning of and put a slash similarly I want to change the meaning of, I, I, do, I do not want to tell that it is an end of the string change the meaning of it put a slash. So, look at that we are and so on uh, we have a slash here then we want the double quotes as it is we also have a slash here. Now, why we do not have a slash here for this double quotes because this is the end of the string and this is the end of the string. So, I do not want to change the meaning of it then I have. So, when I try to print what will happen this double quotes is not taken as anything of start of the string or end of the string it will take double slash as, as it is. So, look at the output we have double slash. So, in python normally anything that you want to change the meaning which is predefined we always try to use a slash. So, in this string what is the problem error in the syntax because we want this double quotes as part of the content for which we achieve that using a slash. So, keep in mind that any changes that you want to do for a predefined meaning of it best way is what use a slash assume that you want a single quotes here single quotes how to use if you use single quotes it will become a start of the string or end of the string. So, if you want single close best option use slash. So, when you use a slash single quote is taken as part of our string. So, you should be very careful like when to use uh, double quotes when to use single quotes if you need them as a content of the data use a slash ok. So, another example like we have a function called count we have a function called count what it does 
simple it will count all the occurrences of this how many occurrences are there like example i have a text where it says i love apples apples apple are my favorite food so now i want to count count apples so when you have count apples now print x what is x x will tell how many occurrences of apple are there in this string now i have txt dot count apple a p p l a apple a p p l a apple so according to our understanding apple is occurring only once apple is occurring only once but we get output as two now why are we getting output as two what is that i am telling i am telling that in the given string which is pointed by txt this is my string i check whether there is a character a p p l e yes a p p l e here also i have a p p l e so hence i have two occurrences in spite x is there but i still get two because i am telling that i am not looking at what is after e i tell is there a content a p p l e yes it is there it is there so i get two second i love apple same same but what am i checking apple but what is the difference here after e i do not have anything but after e i have a blank space one blank space after apple i have one blank space so now when i run this code i see that after e i do not have a blank space after e i have a blank space so my count is what one so you should be very careful checking what how many times i am trying to check with this that is done by count but what input you give is very important so according to us i we expect that this answer should be one but we are getting two why because after e i am not mentioning anything so after e anything can be there after e anything can be there yes one occurrence two occurrence so we got two why we got only one here because i am telling after e one blank space after e yes so discard after e one blank space yes so we have one occurrence we get answer as one so you should be very careful like when you give an input you should take care of that what is that we are expecting and what expression that i am giving for the function is it very much appropriate or not okay now we'll get on to some code kind of thing like in the last session we told either it could be an iteration chapter or could could be a string chapter i told we'll run through few code i i'll give that as an example leave it as a homework in the next session we'll discuss so that's what we'll start discussing now right so first one we'll take it as i want do some kind of counting some kind of counting in the loop now what is my objective i have 1 2 3 4 5 6 so my count is 6 there are six elements that's what i want to display so now when you look at that when I, when we have something called as counting we definitely have the initial value of count so as we start with counting as one our initial value will make it as zero so we, every time i encounter a character like 9 or 41 or something i keep incrementing count by 1 i keep incrementing count by 1 and finally i'll print the count so now before what is the value of count zero what is after value of the count i got 6 so answer as six element now in between what i do every time i iterate every time i iterate i look at which value i am iterating what is the value of the count so why we'll start here count equal to 0 we'll print yeah done then we get on to the for loop first time thing is pointing to 9 thing is pointing to 9 then count equal to 0 plus 1 count became 1 print count 1 and what is that pointing to think it's 9 yeah we got it next time it will go back to for loop think is pointing to 41 now it is pointing to 41 so count 1 plus 1 2 so we got two where is thing pointing it is 41 so on so we get the value of this so after all this the loop has encountered so first time 9 next 41 12 3 74 15 the last value is 15 count happens to be 6 it will come out because there are no more elements it will print the after count we got after count as 6 now here how do i sum up i want to sum them what to do simple make sum equal to 0 then instead of count what will i do count plus 1 instead of that i'll get thing thing plus what i'll add these two right so now look at count equal to 0 but don't worry about the variable name right so now look at what will happen if i add these two together count equal to 0 for thing equal to 9 
first time it is 9, so count is 0, 0 plus thing that is 0 plus 9, we got 9, it will go back, thing is pointing to 41, count equal to count is 9, right, so this is our count, this is our count, count plus thing, what is thing, thing is 41, so gets 41 added here, next time we add plus to this, 12 plus and so on, so it is nothing but do a small change in this logic, we get sum. We want to find an average, what to do? Yeah, we know, we have the sum, we know the total number of elements, divide them together, we get an average. So, look at that. This is summing a loop, we have sum equal to sum plus, instead of sum, in our earlier example, it was count. We used an appropriate variable name, like sum equal to 0, before sum is 0, then for, first time it is pointing to 9, so it will add 9 plus 0, then next time it is pointing to 41. So, it will be 41 plus 9, this becomes 50, what is thing? Thing is 41, so 50, 41. Next time 50 plus 12, 62, what is pointing? 12. Next time it keeps on going till you reach the end, our logic is done and finally it will print what is the sum, sum is 154 afterwards. So, small change in the logic, we got the sum, small change in this, divide by number of elements, we get an average. Look at that, finding the average in the loop, we have sum plus value, same thing, everything same. We had a count example, we have a sum example. Finally, we will divide, sum divide by count, where we get an average, okay. this is the average. So, I have a sum, I have a count, count is known to me, sum is known to me, when I divide, I get 21. So, how did I get count? Yeah, this example gave me the count, this example gave me the count as 6. This program gave me the sum as 154, same example when I divide both of them together, 6, 154, when I divide I get an average as 24. So, what did we change? This part we changed, the logic part we changed, rest of them we kept separate, right. So, if there is some new logic coming in, what should I do? This whole thing will change, that is all, rest of the thing, concept remains same. Only thing I should understand, okay, how to find an average, I should remember the formula for that. Okay. So, here how to find the smallest value? So, uh, this is one peculiar example which will help us to do lot many things, right. So, with this example, we should be able to figure out any problem statement easy to find a solution. Now, here look at the variable largest to so far minus 1, La we are defining largest to so far minus 1, then we are printing it, fine, no problem. Next, we will start the loop. So, in this, what is my objective? Find the smallest value. So, I will start iterating from 9, 41, 12, 3 and so on till the end of it and compare them and identify which is the smallest. So, look at I take 9 here compare with minus 1, 9 greater than minus 1, if yes then largest so far equal to the num, largest so far equal to the num. So, in that case I get 9 here, next it will become 41, my largest so far is 9. So, 41 greater than 9, yes you told, so 41 gets updated here and so on, after printing we got this, but what is our statement here, right. So, we have a largest value, we, we try to look for some smallest value, is that confusion with the heading or confusion with the code, right, fine, get confused, we will get it clarified in the next session.